You sometimes, or maybe most of the time, find yourself being negative, complaining, sad, and all of that low vibe stuff. Well, it's time to kick some ass for those low vibes. I get told a lot that I'm a positive and happy person. So in this video, I'm going to share 14 simple habits that will boost your mood and make you instantly happier and more positive person. And not only that these habits will make you happier on a short term, but they will also help you to build a positive mindset for the long term if practiced daily. So if you want to become that attractive, happy, and positive person who's good vibes light up the room, keep watching. And FYI, I share some tips that you've never heard before, so make sure to watch this video till the end. Do not miss any of these valuable tips. Hi, it's Katarina here. Welcome and welcome back to this channel where we optimize for better, beautiful and balanced life. If you're not yet subscribed to my channel, then what are you doing? Go subscribe right now so you won't miss on living your best life. If you subscribed, thank you for doing that. Now let's get into the habits. Let's start with the basics. And with the basics, I mean healthy food, sleep enough, stay hydrated. The holy triangle of positivity. You no, know, I know, you probably hear this all the time. Every video you click on, it's all the time. The first freaking tip every freaking time is Eat healthy, stay hydrated and sleep enough. But you know, I am not here to give you the average advice. I'm actually going to give you something else, something better. So stay, stay here still, don't click away. Okay, when I say eat healthy, I mean really eat healthy. Cut out all the processed foods, all the e-numbers, and also like figure out what kind of diet fits you, because not everything fits everyone. I used to be vegan and I was so depressed and like I had so many health issues. Then I started to eat meat and I felt so... Good. There's also other things which I'm gonna share with you very soon. So most important thing when it comes to eating for positivity and happiness is breakfast. Breakfast makes or breaks your day. So the breakfast is the most important thing and especially what you eat for breakfast, okay? So if you eat cereals which with a lot of sugar in it, that's going to make you feel very different from eating, for example, protein-packed breakfast and especially eggs. Eggs is like the food of gods in the morning. It has so many good nutritions for you to function well in the morning. When I eat borage for breakfast, I am first of all more tired, I have a brain fog and I'm hungry two hours later, if not earlier, versus when I eat eggs for breakfast and some veggies and then some fiber-rich stuff next to the the eggs because the eggs alone are not gonna keep you filled. I feel like a superhuman on those days. My brain functions so freaking clearly. I think clearly. I don't have a brain fog and I have energy for many hours. In general, my feeling is better. But okay, let's move on. Then second next most important meal of your day is lunch. And you don't hear this often, how lunch affects you. So have you ever experienced the after lunch dip? Well, I have my own theory to this and I don't know if it's backed with science, but it's backed with my experience. I noticed when I eat heavy lunch, I get really bad feeling after like my day is done I am not functioning anymore well on that day and I had this problem like for a very long time and I was trying to figure out what is it and then one beautiful day I skipped lunch and I felt so freaking good but by the dinner I was very hangry so I figured out I figured out a better way to do this than skipping lunch and it's eating something small for lunch when I'm saying this advice bear in mind I'm not trying to give you unhealthy advice on skipping meals okay I'm trying to give you advice on figuring out how your body works and work what works best for you so keep that in mind and what I figured to work well for me is to eat like fruits for lunch apples mangoes like a fruit plate and also I might add peanut butter or or just nuts to it or some small protein packed snack whatever that might be something that has protein in it especially what I'm trying to avoid on lunch are heavy carbs and even more importantly heavy carbs combined with fat so that will be pizza pasta and all of that stuff. Obviously fruits are also carbs but I mean like such that might spike your blood sugar quickly up and then it goes down quickly as well. And then let's talk about hydration. I don't think I need to go really deep into the explanation of why you need to stay hydrated because by now with all this social media content we probably everyone already know why do we need to hi stay hydrated and also in addition to that I think every one of us already knows that water helps you to stay hydrated but there is also plenty of other ways to stay hydrated that are even more effective than drinking water and we're gonna talk about it really soon. And in case you just need a quick reminder 
reminder, yes, hydration, staying hydrated affects your mood. For example, compare yourself on the days when you forget to drink your eight glasses of water. How do you feel? I feel by the end of the day kind of like not feeling it. So that's why you need to stay hydrated. The science behind it, I'm not gonna go into it because it's too boring. So other ways to stay hydrated that are even more effective than drinking water are drinking coconut water, eating fruits. That's why I also like to eat these fruits for lunch. Electrolytes and our electrolytes are especially good on a hot summer day when you're just exhausted <laughs> and drained. Then electrolytes are just perfect way to hydrate yourself. And then drinking fruit juices that are fresh, not like this weird syrup juices with 0% of actual fruits in them. I'm talking about like the real fruit juices, you know, like if you squeeze them yourself or whatever. But it's also important that you don't drink them too much because no matter how healthy it is, is it a fresh squeezed apple juice or what? Because it's anyways going to go just straight to your liver and be processed as pure sugar versus if you just eat it as a whole fruit. Eating the fruit as a whole is better than just drinking the juice because the fruit has the fiber in it, which takes longer for your liver to break down and la 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 la. la. That's why don't over drink fruit juices. Fruit juices are, of course, they are healthy air option, but they are not the healthiest option. And one of the most best fruit juices for hydration is orange juice. Then this one might come to you as a surprise, but milk. Yes, cow's milk. And it's even more effective than water for hydration because it has a lot of electrolytes in it. Yes, I was also shocked when I heard this information for the first time. Obviously, still drinking water is also very beneficial for you. I'm not talking against water, not at all. But when it comes to drinking water, prefer to drink either bottled water or water from tap wood with a filter. Because I don't want you to get all that nasty stuff into your system that comes out of the tap. And by the way, if you want to start your morning right, if you want to have the God's morning routine, then drink a glass of water first thing in the morning. But I bet you all already know that. And then we still have the last part of the holy triangle left and that is sleep. Sleep is so crucial for your mind and positivity and your mood. Like even me, who is a generally very happy person, if I sleep a week poorly or it doesn't even need to be a week, it, one day is enough. If I sleep one night not good, I will be this angry, grumpy human being that just drives everyone crazy. Really, I'm not joking. And I'm also thinking more negative. So if you sleep little and you're depressed, don't ask why you're depressed. You need to sleep more. And by the way, there is also a difference in what time you went to sleep and how you're gonna feel next morning. If you, let's say, sleep for eight hours and you go to sleep before 12 a.m., you're gonna feel better the next morning versus if you go to sleep after 12 a.m. and you still sleep for those eight hours and this is because of melatonin which is hormone that basically just helps us sleep better it starts to work when it gets dark outside but usually it's like around 10 p.m. it starts working and the peak is like around 2 a.m. something like that so the less time you spend in sleep while your brain still naturally releases melatonin the worse you feel next morning okay the next tip for you is to get sunlight and especially if possible get it the first thing in the morning and especially on your eyes because when you get sunlight on your eyes first thing in the morning is much better versus getting like the blue light from your phone or laptop sunlight is beneficial for many functions in our body but especially for the mood it is such a big game changer. I'm literally powered by sun. When there is no sun, I feel more sad versus when there is sun, I'm like, I can rule the world, you know, let's do it all. Speaking of sunlight, also what's gonna help you to become more positive and happy person is getting out of the house. If you sit inside of your four walls every day and you don't get out of the house, don't be surprised why do you feel the way you feel? Why are you depressed, sad and unhappy? You need to get out and especially like walks walking every day mental health walk do that this is so powerful and so beneficial for your mood and happiness and positivity and vibes i walk every day i walk one hour every day it's a non-negotiable for me because on those days when i don't walk i feel like i'm rotting inside of my apartment and i'm not getting any sunlight and i feel like my skin is turning gray and blue and that i'm looking like some half dead plant you know what i mean and also what will help 
help you to become more positive and happy person is making plans and what i mean is making plans for the day but also making plans for the week and for the weekend it's okay to not have plans for one week and have one weekend just for yourself you know but when i start to have like many weeks several weeks when i don't have plans made for myself i start to get a little bit like depressed and anxious because i have too much free time to be with myself alone and also it's just fun to look forward and especially extra hack for you what really helps me is to really keep everything in calendar so even the smallest thing even the most like you would say like meaningless thing i still add it into the calendar because it's so nice to look forward to it i even put birthdays of people i know my friends people who are important to me and no i'm not saying that you need to become crazy like just fill your calendar and just have a lot of to do's to be happy no that's also like useless don't put useless stuff there but just things that make you happier put them into your calendar coffee date with your friends i'm going to have a dinner with your parents on this day you're going to have lunch with your colleague on this day you have a meeting important meeting thursday evening at eight o'clock i don't know on this day i have dancing on that day i go to the gym and then i have a workshop in the weekend everything i put in my calendar that can be considered as something I'm going to do which is like a plan so that I can look forward to it so that my life doesn't feel so meaningless okay I'm taking a moment to hydrate myself so from the plans to doing, if you want to instantly feel better, if you want to have a boost of positivity, the most effective and quickest way to achieve a positive mood and a happy feeling is with moving your body, with exercising. And if you want an extra hack, aerobic is the, the way to go. I know when you're doing the aerobic, it feels like torture, but after you feel amazing. And this is because when you sport, you release endorphins. And endorphins are basically happy hormones. They make you happier you know that feeling after running like when you're torturing yourself for 30 minutes but after you finish the torture you feel so amazing you're sweating your face is red but you feel so amazing you know that feeling if you know you're lucky and if you do exercise also on a regular basis let's say three times a week it also increases your overall happiness level your positivity it goes higher the more you do it and exercising also improves your confidence your self-confidence and confidence is also connected to your positivity and overall mood and how you feel about yourself and how happy person you are in life it improves your brain function and obviously the side result of sporting is that you tend to lose weight if you do it regularly i don't exercise because of certain body goals i exercise for the mood for the mental health if i don't exercise for one week i will already be like leaning towards depression the sixth habit that makes you happier and more positive person is having goals having goals for yourself for your life and working towards those goals so you don't have time for negativity this kind of has the same effects as having just plans to look for forward to because you feel that you're not useless and you have purpose in your life and when you have purpose in your life obviously you're gonna be more positive and happier person because you're working towards something you're achieving things in your life and that of course all affects your confidence your self-esteem your self-image and all of those things are also affecting your mind your mood how happy and positive you are and then the next thing that makes you more positive and happy person is getting ready for the day no matter what you do do you sit at home do you work from home or do you go to the office or are you just not gonna do anything on that day make yourself ready in the morning don't sit in your pajama all day put a nice outfit on that you feel comfortable in do your skincare routine do your makeup whatever it is for you if it's just like a little bit of mascara and that's ready or just some one spot of concealer just do it because that will make you feel like more put together and like a normal person and not just like a person who doesn't care about themselves and is neglecting themselves don't neglect yourself the same way as you take care of your inner world by self-development self-improvement and all of that stuff also take care of your outside with getting ready in the morning it makes you feel more ready for the day you are more confident in yourself because you know you look good and you took the time of the day make yourself ready and that way you also feel mentally more ready and better and that all affects your mood and positivity and how happy you are i mean i feel so much different in my mood and it's crazy how big effect it has if i took the time of the day to just get ready and have a nice outfit on especially the outfit part is for me very important because i i just love it for you also figure out what part of the getting ready you like the most maybe it's doing your hair or your makeup whatever is your way to express yourself so to say dedicate time for that thing and this is not about being surface oriented this is like just taking care of yourself the part 
art of self-love. And sometimes when you need a little bit extra spoiling, when you need an extra boost for your positivity and mood, and this works instantly, but this is not something to get used to because otherwise this becomes like more of an obsession, but it's to buy yourself something new, something nice. Like I, for example, just lately bought myself new sneakers and I'm actually gonna show you the sneakers. These Sambas from Adidas, green. I'm loving them. I saw them and I felt in love with them and they make me so happy. I have new shoes, new sneakers for spring and I'm so happy to walk in them. Yay! The happiness of living in a materialistic world, right? No, but of course, little new stuff sometimes. Of course, it boosts your mood, but don't develop an addiction with shopping. Don't make it a coping mechanism that whenever you need a boost in your mood to buy something new. Don't go there. Rather, go for a run. Habit number nine, which is like going to change your life if you want to become happier and more positive person, is to stop scrolling. Stop spending so much time on social media. Scrolling especially tiktok and reels and shorts stop doing it it's damaging your brain it's also really negatively affecting your life and your future but that's not what i'm gonna talk about in this video if you think of yourself how you feel after you sc just scrolled like two hours straight on a so in social media how do you feel after i bet you feel awful and yet you still continue doing it there is so much more to life than just scrolling on social media and sometimes i even like ask myself how much of my life how I wasted scrolling on social media that I could have used to do something more beneficial with my life actually living the life because we don't actually realize how much time we spend on social media and how much time we're actually just wasting because we're gonna die someday you remember that and lately I've been really obsessed with the thoughts that I don't want to die living a life that I spent scrolling on social media anyway let's not get too deep when I was younger I didn't spend so much time on social media but but now, like in my 20s, I developed a crazy habit to scroll a lot on social media. A few months ago, I decided for myself that I'm not going to use social media for consumption. I don't understand the point of social media anymore in terms of like all the time scrolling as a consumer. I do enjoy a lot creating to social media and YouTube is a little bit different, especially with its long forms. I watch a lot of YouTube, like the long form formats, but it's very different from like short format social media. So what I did I ended scrolling on short format social media and half of my problems disappeared literally not even half like 90% of my worries my problems my anxieties reasons to stress about all of that literally just disappeared I have such a light feeling on my chest and I feel so 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 much happier and of course I'm much more positive I actually honestly can't even describe you how amazing I feel after I haven't been on social media like for a few months now I didn't even realize it until like a few days ago I was like hey you know what I feel quite freaking amazing <laughs> and then I realized oh yeah it's because I don't use so much social media anymore I do have some people I follow there because out of motivation and because like they help me with getting my goals and like I, I like to genuinely like to follow those creators but with that being said I still don't spend hours scrolling on social media so definitely if you want to be more happy and positive person stop scrolling on social media get rid of that bad habit and replace that habit with reading books and especially reading books on self-development self-improvement and so on start reading books that help you to become a better person and develop a better life for yourself those books are always oriented on living a better life so obviously that is going to make you more happier and a positive person it also helped me i remember the first time when i read my first book on self-development like many years ago i remember my li <laughs> literally I'm not joking my life changed after that first book it was really life-changing so if you're not yet into reading books on self-development and self-improvement then you better start now because reading books on self-development and self-improvement helps you to rewire your brain and why it's such a good thing is because I think it's still quite common misconception that if you're a negative person that's how you're destined to be but actually that is not true you can actually train yourself to become more positive person and books on self-development and self-improvement are going to help you to develop that positive mind positive mindset and positive approach to things positivity in a way is a choice because you can choose 
choose to train yourself to react to things in a positive and an optimistic way. The reason why you can do this is because it's literally just a function in your brain. You have a synopsis. The people who react to things in a more negative way, they have a shorter way in their brain to react to things negatively. So their synapses goes quicker to the negative reaction, whereas for positive people, the synapses goes quicker to the positive reaction. Basically, this is the reason why some people are more positive and some people are more negative. And it feels to us that we are born in that way just because it's so automated in us. But actually, you can train your brain if you're a negative person. You can train yourself to become that positive person. But you just have to be really conscious in the beginning that, hey, situation happened and I need to now see the positive side in it instead of the negative side. But you can really train yourself. I'm going to present you some examples and how you can train yourself to become more positive if you tend to lean to more negative thinking. So in a situation where there's, for example, a new opportunity, a negative mind says, I've never done that before. And a positive person says, oh, it's an opportunity to learn something new. In a complicated situation where things are not working out, a negative mind will say, it's getting too complicated. And a positive mind will say, let's tackle it from a different angle. A negative mind will say, I don't have the resources. A positive mind will say, I will find the resources. When something feels unrealistic, a negative mind will say, there is no way it will work. A positive mind will say, I will make it work. And when you are learning a skill, a negative mind is like, I can never get good at this, so why would I even bother? Whereas a positive mind will say, you can learn anything if you have enough time and practice. See the difference. Try to learn the positive patterns of thinking and retalk it in your brain. Obviously, this doesn't happen overnight. Don't expect you to switch from a negative thinker to a positive thinker overnight. But with time and practice, it's possible. Okay, the next habit that's going to make you happier, more positive person is to do nice things to other people. Sharing and doing nice things to others makes other people happy, which boosts your mood because we people love to see others becoming happy because of us. And happiness is contagious. For example, you have now a great opportunity to do nice things to other people by giving this video a thumbs up if you have found this video helpful and share it with your bestie so we get the good going around. That way you're going to help me a lot with growing this YouTube channel, which makes me really, really happy. Thank you for doing that. I love you. And I bet you're now happy seeing me happy. The next habit that's going to make you happier and more positive person is cleaning, the habit of cleaning your home. Have that routine, a habit to clean in your home. Because when your home is clean, your mind is organized. And when your mind is organized, you have a more positive and a happier mind. I always have a one week a day where I deep clean our apartment and it's usually always Sunday. So you are ready for the week and your home is clean and you are happy in your head. <laughs> and also keep your workplace neat and organized. It's also important for your happiness. <laughs> the next tip that I have for you is to make time for people you love. Your friends, your family, people who are close to you. Make time to socialize with them, spend time with them because socializing is so important and especially socializing in the real world, not on social media, not through your phone. Seeing your friends in the real world, interacting with them in the real world is so different to social media and the way you feel after and having a social life with quality people is so extremely important for your mental health and mental health of course is the number one thing you should focus on if you want to be more positive and a happy person. As I said, for positivity and happiness reasons, it's important that you have people around you who don't drag you down with them so you have quality people, quality friends around you. And if you want to know how to find these kind of people, these quality people who root for you, 